Okay, so now that we have completed the, the texturing and all the shaping process, we are pretty much re ready to start to actually add color to the model. The first thing I want to tell you about is that I'm not no longer working on layers. I baked all the layers that I was working with, mainly because, because I was happy with the results. I'm actually not, not even going to use a layer, but if you want to use a layer, of course, you can do that. Before we start to color anything, we have to enable here what says RGB, the RGB channel. Obviously, the RGB is for color, and because we're not going to be sculpting anything, we're actually going to disable this that says C add, so make sure you disable that. And just to let you know, to adjust the intensity of color, this is the slider for that. Or of course, if you put, hold down spacebar, you can get this little menu here. And here's the RGB intensity, which you can control from here as well. So before we do anything, we have to switch our material that we're using. So right now we're using what is called the red wax material which is the one that you, it's a good material to work with when you're sculpting. Also another good material when you're sculpting is the basic material. It let, lets you see some of the detail a little better than, than the red wax. So I sometimes like to use this one, especially when it comes to those little details. But when it comes to actually coloring this, we probably want to use something that's more neutral like uh, we can use, I normally use the skin shaded, one of the skin shades here it's actually like somewhat neutral material so I'm going to use the skin shade 4 skin shaded 4 and right now it's all white no, because that is because white is our color right now that we're using so say if I click here and I switch to something else but right now it's not updating but uh, but I'll show you how you can actually change that color so this is your primary color that you're going to be using and this is the subtractive color so whenever you press alt you're going to get the color that you have for this one okay so first let's look at the picture so that we can decide on the base color for the dinosaur I kinda like this one so now we can go ahead and choose a color, a base color for the whole object. So of course you can click here and just look for that color that you're looking for. And one thing that I want to cover today is how to actually use images if you want to. So if you come here to texture, you see that you have an option called image plane and you can load an image. I think you can also set uh, some of the reference views. Now one thing to remember is that sometimes this works and sometimes it does not work. So you may have some issues. So if it doesn't work one time, uh, you're probably going to close ZBrush and open it back up again. First I'm going to save so that just in case something happens. So now we can go ahead and go to texture and you can actually you will have to adjust the size of the image here before you you actually load it so just letting you know that so load image and first of all ZBrush wants to open a, wants to open a Photoshop file but you can of course change that to a JPEG or whatever image you are using and if you're lucky you're going to get that image as a background now now it's yeah it worked for me right now so I got that image as a background back there so I'm working with my model the model here and the image is back there the good thing about having that picture back there is that we can actually uh, use some of the colors from that picture if you press C if you're over a color here you see that y you get that color so say I click here for the blue you see that you get that blue and that even works for the interface of ZBrush. See how you can get those colors, like say this yellow, you can get it here. 
so C is the one for your color picker basically so I'm going to press C to get maybe that color okay so I'm going to use that as my base color so now to do that make sure that RGB intensity is set to 100% right now and you come to color and then fill object now what it did right now is uh, the image was actually enabled here as a texture so that's what it kind of did so let's go up and do that one more time and fill object and now we have our base color for our dinosaur so this is how you can get started and with the coloring process now one more thing I want to show you how to do and just in case you don't know is how to use the light box within ZBrush uh, and what that basically is is using an image and using the actual image for your color process so in order to do that you go to texture and since we already have that image of the dinosaur here if you don't have that you can always import the image so what you want to do is click here where it says add to spotlight actually you want to make sure that the image is actually loaded let's go ahead and do that select the image first now go to texture and you see the image is loaded and make sure you add to spotlight and now the image is right here on top and there's a few things you can do with it you can scale that one thing that I recommend is that you change the spotlight radius and now if you press Z the image is in the background and you can actually start to color the dinosaur using the image see that we're actually using the image for the texture now one thing to remember is that the quality of the image matters so whatever if your image is not uh, very good quality is really uh, pixelated that's going to appear here as well so you have to get a good quality image if you want this to work so you see that the colors are right there on the model so that's actually pretty making things really easy for you and to go back to the image press Z and press Z again to go back to the image here and now if you want to disable that you have to press shift C and now that's no longer enable so if you press C again nothing is going to happen so I can use that those colors and I can sample those colors and and use them to to continue
Now another thing that's really important that I want to show you is so for for coloring process this is pretty much all I'm going to do just continue to layer some colors and again you can even use the layers in uh, ZBrush and adjust the intensities of those later so one thing that you probably want to maybe know how to do is what if I want to change the color for like these lines that texture and that's an easy way of doing that and that is by masking so if we go to our masking menu here now we have a few options here of course you have to mask everything and inverse and all those things but there's one really useful option which is the mask by cavity what that does you press that and you see that all those little wrinkles for the for the skin was masked so that we can even so right now if we paint outside those uh, wrinkles let's say they're not going to be affected by any color right now and again if you want to use mask by cavity I recommend that you change this to 100 intensity and you can even play with, the, with some of the settings here if you see that it's not masking enough of the details that you created you can always change these options here so you see that all the wrinkles were uh, masked so the cool thing that we can do with that is if we inverse that mask we can color the those wrinkles as well those little uh, cavities let's say now let me look at the picture and see are those white are those black because they tend to be white uh, a lighter color sometimes sometimes they're darker colors let's try a darker color first so first we need to get a really darker color here and let's come here maybe change that maybe like that and if we inverse control I or here's the option to inverse so you see now we can paint on those little wrinkles so if we start painting on those let's see the difference here see that we start to paint on those individual wrinkles and the easiest way of doing all that area is if you increase uh, the intensity and go back to that color fill object it's only going to fill the area that's not masked so now control and click outside to unmask everything and you see that now we have color inside those areas It's, it's starting to look fairly decent and of course if you want if you don't want the background image to be there you can go to texture I, I find that the easiest way if, is uh, if you just click on any of these it's actually going to be gone pretty much and I think the image still there but we don't see it I think, think technically we're working on a different plane here 
So that's the easiest way if you don't want to see that image, if it bothers you to have the image in the background. So I'm going to stop here and next time I'm going to probably show a really quickly a time lapse of the may maybe extra things that I could do to this. But it shouldn't be too much, uh, it's pretty much getting to that stage. And after that I'm going to show you how to pose the model really quickly. Of course if you're going to actually use it for animation and rig it and whatnot, probably don't really need to pose it. But I'm going to show you how to pose the model and then how to take that back to Maya, how to create the textures, the bump maps, so that and in the end actually how to render in ZBrush and probably maybe Maya as well.